Hey, storage godfather Calvin Zito, and also 10 time V expert. I've been a big fan of VVOLs since VMware first started talking about this, oh, probably eight years ago at least. HPE was actually in the forefront of developing VVOLs with VMware. We used uh, 3PAR as a development platform, or VMware used 3PAR as a development platform. Now what I want to do is just show you more of that love for VVOLs that I have with a demo that I've got with HPE Primera, our newest array in the portfolio. Before I get to the demo, just a couple quick things. Uh, if you're watching this on my blog, on the Around the Storage blog, I've got some links in the blog where you can see more details about VVOLs, uh, another presentation I did that goes into a deep dive of what VMware VVOLs is, a demo with it on 3PAR, if I can pull out some other demos, I'll get those into the blog as well. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, check the description to get more information if you're just not up to speed on VVOLs. Anyway, without further ado, here's my uh, HPE Primera and VVOLs demo. We're going to start at the HPE Primera SSMC, and you can see that I have a HPE Primera C630. I'm going to click on Hosts. And I'm going to show you the VMware hosts that we're going to use in this demo. You can see it's a DL360G9 uh, and has the 227 in the name. And this host already has a volume that we have exported. But it is a VMFS host. So what we're going to do is walk through the process of enabling VVOLs on our HPE Primera. There's two ways you can do it. We can do it from the SSMC or we can do it from a CLI. So here I am in the CLI. I'm going to do a show sys, and you can see the C630. Uh, don't let it confuse you that it says HPE 3PAR. It is a Primera, but in the way it identifies itself, it does identify as being part of the 3PAR family. I'm going to show the show VASA, and we can see the URL for our VASA provider. You can see that the VASA provider is only proposed, and if we look at the certs, we don't have a cert, so that's the first thing we need to do here. So I'm going to use the command to create um, the certification. This is a self-signed certification. And I'll put in the instructions here to do it. I'll do the show cert command. There you can see the VASA provider. I'm going to do show VASA, and we can see it's now disabled, so we actually have to enable it, and we'll do that with this next command. And we'll do that with the start VASA command. This normally takes a little bit, but we'll fast forward through that. I'll do the show VASA command, and now we can see that it is enabled. We're going to go back to the SSMC, and we now need to enable our container. This is the VVOLS container that has to be turned on when you want to use VVOLS on an array. I'm going to click on Show More, and here you can see the storage containers, which I'll click on. You can see I don't have a storage container, so I'll click on the Create Storage Container button. I'm given this dialog box where I will give it a name. And I'm going to click the Create button. And we now have a storage container that's being created, and we'll fast forward to where it is completed. Let's go to the CLI again and show the container now has been created. We'll use this command to look for containers, and there is the container. And a container is really nothing more than a VV set, so I'm going to do show VV set, and we can see it there as well. It's got nothing in it right now, but we're going to fix that here. So the next thing we need to do is register the VASA provider in vCenter. So I'm in the vCenter client. Click on configure, storage providers. I'm going to click the add button, give the storage provider a name. And the URL I need here, I can get from the show VASA command in the CLI. So there it is. I'm going to copy it, paste it in, and we supply the login information to our HPE Primera array and click OK. Now we see a message here that says it failed, but this really isn't a failure. It's just really a step 
to get you to look at the thumbprint on the array and ensure that it's the same one that we see here. And I can see that it ends in 1E30, so let's go confirm that that's what it is, and yep, that's what it is, so we're good to go. And I'll click yes to confirm and keep going forward here. And we can see that our storage provider is here, it's active and it's been registered with the vSphere client. We can see supported profiles we have and we can see it's online and active. So let's create a VVOL data store. We're gonna use that storage container we created to host a new data store. So here, as I create my new data store, I want to pick the VVOL option so it's not a VMFS data store. Click Next. I'm going to give it a name. We'll use VVOLs in the title of my data store name so we can clearly see it through the rest of the demo. And we can see the backing storage container that we're going to use here for this data store. going to pick my host, click next, and now we're going to go ahead and create our data store. And now we can see the VVOLS data store, and I can see there's also a VMFS data store that's hosted by the same HPE Primera. So review, we've created our VVOLS container, we've created our VVOLS data store. The next thing we want to do is to make sure our multipathing is set correctly. And we're going to do that at protocol endpoint level where we click on configure, protocol endpoint. And the way we do this is with LUN256. You can see I've got the edit multipathing. And I'm going to switch it to Route Robin here and click OK. So what this means is when I create VVOL VMs, all of those volumes, the VVOLs, will end up inheriting whatever policies that this uh, protocol endpoint has. Now we're going to go create our storage policies with our HPE Primera being used as the backend storage. So we'll create it as a Primera policy here within the vSphere client. We're going to enable the rules for HPE Primera storage. Click Next. And now we'll click Add Rules. And the four rules I have are the common provisioning groups, the snapshots, thin provisioning, and the data reduction that I'm going to use. So first, the CPGs. I've got SSD RAID 6 for my snapshots. I'm going to use the same SSD RAID 6. I'm going to enable thin persistence and just I'm going to say no uh, data reduction and click next. So basically what it does is it finds storage that can address these policies that I've got and there it is my storage container. And so this is going to be both SSD RAID 6 for both my CPGs and my snapshots thin provisioning enabled, and data reduction disabled. So now let's go ahead and create a VM. And we're going to use the policies that we just uh, specified. So I'll right click, find new virtual machine, click next. We'll give it a name here. Click next. Now I could pick up the VMFS data store, but it is a VVOL VM, so I'm going to use the Primera policy I just specified. There's the storage that's compatible with the policies I've got. You can see there's storage that's incompatible with it because those are all VMFS data stores. Click Next. Click through this compatibility in the OS. I'm going to configure a 40 gig Windows VM here, summarizes what I've got, and then click Next. And now my VM has been created, and it's using my VVOL storage. So let's go look at what it looks on the three-par side. We'll click on Virtual Machines. 
And so there's my test VM. You can see it's got two VMware VVols associated with it right now. You can see one is the config volume and the other is the data volume. Now we're going to power on the VM. And after I do this, you'll see I have another object that gets created, specifically a swap file uh, that gets created when you turn on a VM. There you can see it. Now let's just for fun create a snapshot. And as you might predict, now we'll see a snapshot VVOL object that gets created. We're not going to include a snapshot of the memory here. And we'll look back onto the SSMC. And as soon as the snapshot is created, we'll see now we have four volumes and we can see there are two data volumes one of them being the snapshot and the other three that we already had so let's go back to the vSphere client we'll create another snapshot and this time we'll include the memory and I'm sure you can predict what's going to happen now I'll give you a hint we'll see another data volume and there'll be a another memory VVOL object that you'll see once the snapshot's complete. Takes a little bit longer to create the snapshot. There you can see it's completed. So this will take a little bit longer to complete since we're getting the memory. But let's go back to the CLI and we'll look at the uh, show VVOL command. You can see now we, there are six volumes as part of this. Uh, VVOL. Can't quite see what they are yet, but with this next command, you can see what the six of them are. Now we'll see the details of what the actual VVOL objects are. I've got the config volume, the original data volume, and then you can see I've got the two snapshots I've done. There's the memory that I've included when I did the second snapshot and the swap volume. Let's go back to the SSMC. You can see there I have uh, the six VMware VVOLs, the two snapshots. There's the two individual snapshots. Go back to the overview. We'll click on the six objects, and you can see it's the same six that we could see with the CLI. So there you have it. That says VMware VVOLs running on an HPE Primera. Learn more at hpe.com slash storage slash Primera. Follow our blog at hpe.com slash storage slash blog. And thanks for joining me on this Around the Storage Block video blog.